Hey everyone, welcome back. I know it's been a while since I put some content out on YouTube, but I've been watching some recent videos on the Grandstream Software UCM, the beta release. I think Mr. Willie Howe did an installation video along with Mr. Tim Tech. And being a Grandstream kind of guy myself, as you all know, I thought, hey, I want to download that beta, get it installed, and give it a test run myself. Didn't plan on making a video about it, just wanted to play around with it. However, um, I thought, wow, this would make for some good content. I haven't done it in a while. So yeah, let's do this. Uh, real quick, if you're wondering what this strap going down my shoulder is, it's um, housing a two and a half pound sleeping chihuahua who wanted to come up and help edit with the video, but then decided to go to sleep. So anyway, let's get on with it. So I'm not going to show you how to do the installation process. Willie and Tim did great extensive videos on that process and if you'd like to see the installation itself then I'll link to both their videos up above and also down in the video description. What I'd like to do is try to get a couple of these phones here configured and see if we can get some extension to extension lo local calling happening. So what I have here is an old old Sangoma S300 phone. It was my first desk phone that I got when I was playing with free PBX several years back. And I have to say, ever since turning over to Grandstream UCM, I have not looked back. I love it. And the poor Sangoma phone has just sat in the drawer for several years. In fact, it's all full of dust, as you could probably see there. Then the other phone I have is a Grandstream, very slim, GHP 611W. It's an hotel phone that uh, Grandstream sent me. And by the way, I want to thank Brian over at Grandstream. Even though I took a little hiatus from YouTube, he's been keeping me in the loop with the latest products and sent me the invitation to test the software UCM in its beta stage. So thank you very much, Brian. I appreciate that. In fact, if you guys stick around to the end of this video, I'll share with you how you could potentially download the beta and play with it and participate in the process yourself if you so feel if you feel so inclined. Anyway, that said, I just want to get these phones set up. So let's switch over to the computer screen now. And I have the UCM, the software UCM installed on a virtual machine. By the way, if you're not sure what software UCM means, it's just a software based PBX. Now, Grandstreams had PBX hardware on the market for years, but now they're making it available to you as a software so that you could roll it out on your own hardware, be that a, an actual. A machine or a virtual machine. Like in my case, it's a virtual machine running on a Ugreen NAS. The Ugreen NAS is running 32 gig of DDR5 RAM, which I just upgraded, but that's not necessary for this particular installation. Okay, so let's go into the virtual machine manager. I won't show you the installation, like I said, but I will at least show you the specs that I gave the virtual machine. So if we come down to settings, you can see that I gave the resources, the CPU of two cores, memory, four gig, disk space, 30 gig, and then I just bridged the network connection. So that's it, pretty straightforward, according to Grandstream's documentations, which I'll leave a link to that down in the video description as well. So there you go, there's the actual specs for the virtual machine. This is the actual UCM software, and this looks identical. And if you're familiar with Grandstream's products, you, you, you'll be familiar with this. But this is identical to the actual hardware UCM, uh, the 6302 that I have in the back closet in my rack. As you can see here, it is a trial package. For me, it's good until February 24th. You get 30 days from the time that you activate it, and you do get a license during the... Um, process uh, from Grandstream. They send you, you request the license and they send you an activation code so that you can use this software for 30 days. It has comes with the up to 50 extensions and max concurrent calls of 24 calls. So that's pretty good. Once the installation process is completed, typically the wizard will give you five extensions. Now, since I only knew I had two phones to play with here in the lab, I didn't do all five. I just did two, extension 1000 and extension 1001. So we're going to need a couple of pieces of information. We're going to need to know the SIP server 
IP address. That's the UCM IP address, which in my case, it's 192.168.25.83, but this will be different in your own uh, network scenario. So just make note of that. We're going to also need the, if we come in, edit the extension, we're going to need the extension number, which we know here is 1000 and the SIP password, which is created during the installation process and you can change at any time. So I know this extent, I know this SIP password right here. In fact, I made it the same for both extensions so that it would just make it easy for this lab demonstration. So, okay, so we have extension 1000 and extension 1001. So what we're gonna do now is, why don't we get the Sangoma S300 registered? We have to do that manually because it's a non-Grandstream product. So let's come over to the UI for the Sangoma phone. And I happen to know the IP address of this phone uh, because I checked my DHCP um, table in my router. But if you don't know that, you're gonna need to know your IP address to access the phone's UI as well. So let's get signed in to the Sangoma phone. Okay, there we go. We're gonna come up to account. We're gonna to come to basic. And again, this will be similar but different on every vendor's phone. And you'll see that when we get into the GHP 611 as well. So again, the first piece of information we need is the SIP server. That's the IP address of the UCM. So. In my case, again, it's 192.168.25.83. We're gonna come down to the SIP user ID, which is the extension number, so 1000. The authenticate ID is the same. You can use 1000. And then under authenticate password, that's where we're gonna put in that SIP password. And then we'll come down and we'll say save set. And as you can see up here, we have an account status of registered. So if I jump back to the UCM software now, I should see that the extension 1000 is in fact registered. It's got a green idle status. So we're good to go there. Now, I'm going to register the GHP 611W the same way manually by using the phone's actual web UI. Uh, I should be able to do it by coming to device management, zero config. And it should, the GHP, because it's a grand stream phone, should be showing up here. I also did ahead of time download, download the template for this model and then came over to model templates and added the template for the GHP 611W. And it still didn't show up. When I did an auto discover, it did not show up. When I added it manually, it wouldn't let me config it. And I'm not sure why. Um, if anybody's out there, Willie, if you see this video or if someone from Grandstream sees this video and you are encountering the same thing, let me know. Maybe it's a bug and it is beta software, but in any event, we can go ahead and go the old fashioned way and register this phone using its own UI. So let's go to the GHP 611W page. We'll get signed in. Okay, we're gonna come over to the left side and we're gonna say account one. And again, very similar to obviously different, but the same concept as the S300 phone. So we're gonna give it the SIP server information. And then we'll come down to SIP user ID, which is the extension number. So this one will be 1001. The authentication ID will be the same, 1001. And then we're gonna put in the password, the SIP password. and say save and apply. And it says applied and saved. So let's make the account active. We'll save and apply again. That's very, that's an important step. Okay, so now technically we should come over to the software UCM and see two registered extensions. 
And there we go. Okay, so we have an idle status for both extension 1000, which is the S300, and extension 1001, which is the GHP611. So let's go ahead now and make a local call from each phone to the other phone. Let me switch back so that you can also see the status on the screen. So when I'm calling from the S300, you'll see the status change on extension 1000, and you should also see the status change on extension 1001. So let's do that now. Okay. So if you could see, I don't know if you could hear the GHP 611 is ringing, but if you look at the screen, you could see the S300 is in use and the GHP 611 is ringing. So we're good to go there. Let's just make sure we have audio. Hello, hello. And we do have audio, so yay, that's good. All right, we're going to do the reverse now. We're going to call from the hotel phone to the Sangoma phone. So we're going to dial extension 1000. You could definitely hear the Sangoma phone ringing, and you could see on the screen the status has changed. And do we have audio? Hello? Hello? And we have audio. Okay. So, now what I'd like to do is, since we were successful with that, let me just jump over to the information screen. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll put this link down in the video description to get here, and it shows you how to participate. It talks to you about the steps involved in participating in the software UCM beta test. There's also a link, if you click here, well, scroll down the page to all the documentation that will help you. And again, I will link out to Willie's video and Mr. Tim Tech's video in case you want help with the installation process. And obviously I went through the installation. So if you have any questions, if you're, um, you watch this video and you decide you want to go ahead and, and give it a whirl and you have any questions on the installation process, you could always drop those in the comments as well. I'd be happy to answer them if I can. So there you go. Uh, do What do I think about the software UCM in beta? Well, <coughs> actually, considering it's beta, it seems to be working extremely well so far, except, like I said, I don't know why the GXP611 did not show up in the zero config automatically. But again, it is beta, so hopefully um, they'll work through that. And um, so, yeah, but what do I think about it overall? I think it probably is a good experience. Well, for a home lab situation, anyone who dabbles with home lab, you know, it's just another thing to tinker with and play with, but can it be used in production? I guess if you feel comfortable enough to roll it out and maintain it on your own hardware or on a virtual machine in a small environment, like a small office or a, even a home phone system, um, not a lot of handsets, then yeah, why not? I mean, uh, whether it's going to be free or not, I really don't know. I have no in, in, insight information on that. The fact that the trial, the beta is in trial for 30 days and only 30 days makes me wonder, but I'm not sure. So um, in any event, I hope you liked the video. It was fun to um, be back and make some content and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Take care.